historic structure and they want to protect it during a seismic event, so they want to put it on isolators so that the entire Capitol building sure can. can be isolated from ground movements below. Uh, in addition to that, what makes CAMS a little bit unique is they also wanted to add a basement to it. And so not only did we install microbus, but they also wanted to excavate down 15 feet. You know, a lot of jobs are you're given a set of plans and then you go out and build it. Uh, some jobs we design it and then we start building it because of the timeline how long the governor and the legislature could be out of the building. It was a very rapid schedule. The entire team design was, was evolving as we were building it, and so it was a design and build sort of concurrently. In some cases, building it as, you know, in, in advance of the design. This is a modern marvel, and to be able to drill 700 plus micropile 175 towers, try to get it all coordinated, get deliveries delivered uh, in a timely manner and on schedule. Uh, it's a feat. I was really impressed when I got down here. The crews have done an exceptional job. The biggest thing for me is looking ahead, getting ahead, and making sure we have everything we need to be successful on our next, next day, next week. It's very, very strategic in how we approach and, and get to our work. On this job, we had shot creep, micropiles, tower builds, uh, jacking, lagging, multiple activities going on and at the same time. And, uh, the guys have done a great job. My name is Caesar. I'm a foreman for Pacific Foundation. Uh, here at the Oregon State Capitol, we're doing seismic upgrades. Uh, that entails supporting the whole building and excavating down 17 feet down below footing. So we had a total of seven drill rigs out here at one point. Inside the building, uh, five rigs and they're drilling. Uh, we were doing about uh, five holes a day. We're working in tight quarters, low overhead. We didn't have a whole lot of clearance. Uh, spots were 10 feet, barely enough room to fit the drill rig in. You got columns everywhere, you got equipment everywhere, you got big steel that you're handling to get into the ground. My name's Josh Wells, I'm an operator. My niche is low overhead. I've done a lot of tight access jobs. It's hard drilling. We had places where we're drilling with 14 feet of headroom, and we're drilling with places where we had six foot of headroom, so we'd only have maybe an inch, inch and a half of clearance. It took us a long time to get a routine to where everything just clicked. It was a trust we built in each other. When they knew we were moving, they were where they needed to be to shut off the air, shut off the water, disconnect stuff, and would move everything essentially without having to say anything and uh, we could probably go all day without communicating, but we knew what each person's step was. When things are going good, we got, we got a big old plume of smoke coming out of the building. We're, uh, we're the cause of that. We're, you know, that means we're just burning tons of wire. Everything's fitting up. Our saw guy's just blazing away. Cutting 10 towers a day with the saw. And uh, you know, we're, all our guys are in there fitting, grinding. You just hear grinders from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Smoking away. I've never seen so many people in one small area. You gotta plan ahead, you gotta stay on your toes. Always be aware of your surroundings. Everything's changing constantly. Uh, safety is number one. Right? Uh, my name is Ben Baldridge and I'm a project manager at Pacific Foundation. It's a one-off in a big way. It requires several people being on site and their focus daily. So I was handling procurement. Devon was tracking, as-building, coordinating with subs to some degree. And then I would say technical, contractual, billing, dealing with the subs and, and those levels. I've been a part of projects that were larger in scale, but the Huh. The daring to dream, this one's up there. I would say this is 
maybe at the top or second, yeah. Success is when they set the building back down on the isolators. At that point, nothing is relying on anything that we installed. Once it's set down on the isolators, all of our micropile, all of our shoring is just finito. So I would say that's success. And then the final, the big, the big one will be removing it all at the very end. Once they poured all their concrete, we got to go in there and cut a million pounds of steel out and remove it from the site. My name is Emilio Soto. Uh, I'm an operator and I'm the lead guy helping Caesar run the job. Every day is just a battle with that material down there. And the guys really got to know their drills very well. The machine's just taking a beating. And luckily we had Yusil here for most of this whole job and Yusil is just phenomenal. He, he helped out so much. It was so stressful for him. If all three drills weren't drilling at the same time, you just, your production slows down. It's fully supported right now. We're actually taking out some of our jacks. We're welding on the, the towers. We're wrapping it up for the most part on that. And then comes uh, the demo. And right now, Josh is working on the soil nails, the whalers, have a bunch of welders down there getting all that prepped and welded. So hopefully here soon, we wrap it up here. <laughs> During Christmas, that was the big push, is to finish the final towers. And the fabricators are scheduled to have off. Uh, FOT brought in over 40 fabricators to work during the week between Christmas and New Year's so that they could meet their deadline on January 4th, and they met it. It was, it was quite an accomplishment. Uh, and then once we started seeing those things really you know, bear fruit and towers show up and get thrown in the air by car, um, you started to realize we were gonna get to where we needed to be. You know, I've worked with Hoffman for my entire career and they're a fantastic company. They've always been very fair with us. This was probably the most stressful relationship we've had with them just because their deadline was so tight and they could see the potential for that slipping if we didn't you know, continuously accelerate and push. So uh, Josh Faulkner, he pushed us really hard in every meeting. In the end, I really appreciate what he did because we could not have ever relaxed. Uh, we had to be pushed, and Hoffman did a great job of pushing us. You know, going into the next one, there's a lot of process lessons that we learned, ways to make it faster, you know, more efficient. Um, there were definitely a lot of lessons that were learned, and I think the next job could be far easier.